the world that we go talk to, that go to church. I could, I could name off so many churches around here, but I'm not going to. But I'll tell you the truth. In the day we live, they're not preaching the gospel. <laughs> not, not from the pulpit. I know that. And pastor, pastor knows that. But if, if they're not hearing it at church, they're, they're really not going to hear it at home. So who are they going to hear it from? Amen. You. Every, every one of you, that's who they're going to hear it from. It's your responsibility. It's not, it's not pastor's responsibility. It's not my responsibility. I don't have to give the evangelism. I just, I just love God. Period. You, know, you read the Bible and all, you, you get a love for God. You start getting full up, filled with the Spirit. You know, you just can't help but speak and, and tell what you've seen and heard. Right? That's what the Word says. That's what First John said. We can't help it. Let me read that real quick. I got about eight minutes left. All right. All right, First John. I believe it's chapter one. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard and which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our and our hands have handled concerning the word of life, was manifested. That means he came. Jesus came. And we have seen and bear witness and declare to you. They're declaring to you. That eternal life which was from the Father was manifested to us. That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you. That you also may have fellowship with us. And truly the fel our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And these and these, uh, these things we write to you that your joy may be full. Oh, man. Oh, amen. How many people want to fill people up with joy? Amen. Then go tell them what you've seen and heard. Amen. Go tell them. Because you're not going to tell them and they're going to be empty and they're going to die and go to hell. And there are many people going to church today in 100 years they're going to be in a pit of hell. How can you say that, Steve? That's so hard. It's the truth. Where do they go? Do they go to purgatory? No, nope, Bible doesn't hit a place called that. Most people think that. People need to be born again. And the only way they're going to know is, is you guys, every, ladies, every one of you are ministers of reconciliation. Amen. It's in it's the Second Corinthians chapter 5. Jesus, God called us to be ministers of reconciliation. Be ye reconciled to God, he said. Hallelujah. And um, God has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. Why? He calls all men everywhere to repent. God's not willing to any perish, but all come to repentance. It's pretty simple. If you don't know Jesus Christ today, I'm not going to tell you that God's going to fill the God-shaped vacuum in your heart and give you love, peace, joy, happiness, long-suffering, everything's cool. I'm not going to tell you that. You may hear it somewhere else, but that's, that's not in the Bible. That's not, that's not the gospel. The gospel is simple. We've all fallen short of God's glory. We broke God's law. God has a law, just as civil law has a law. If you, break, if you speed down the highway right here, Roanoke police will pull you over, give you a ticket. You'll, you either pay the fine or do the time in jail, right? Yeah. Right. Caleb, is that right? Where's Caleb at? Is Caleb in here? Oh, he's on the hall. Well, Caleb will tell you that. They will pull you over and they will, they will ticket you. Well, if you can't pay the ticket, you go to jail, right? You, it doesn't matter if you stand before the judge and say, Judge, I'm really sorry. I just ask your, your forgiveness. You let me go. No. You pay the fine and do the time, right? So there's laws. God has a law. God has, God has ten laws. And we all have ten cannons pointed at you. The Bible says if you tell a lie, it makes you a liar for life. A liar. White lie, half truth, or an exaggeration. It doesn't matter. God's law says if you steal one thing, it doesn't matter the value of it. Ink, pen, paper, clip. I mean, if you're a little kid, time doesn't take you away. I hear so many people say, well, I stole a little thing when I was, when I was a kid. That was a long time ago. It doesn't matter if you murdered somebody a long time ago. You're still a murderer. It doesn't matter how much time has gone by. Jesus said if you've been angry or hated someone without cause, you're a murderer in your heart. You're a murderer. And God sees that. If you've ever used God's name in vain, say, God, and in his word, would damn. That's blasphemy. That's like, take, that's, that's like, that's like we don't even use Osama bin Laden's name as a cuss word. Or Adolf Hitler's name is a cuss word. But we'll, we'll, we'll say God's name, that God has given you life, that God has given you your family and, and your taste buds to enjoy good food with. It's blasphemy. Imagine if, 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 I, if I came and put a little uh, a recorder behind your ear, and for a week it recorded everything you said, done, thought, or felt for a week. Your thought life, your actions, your words, it recorded everything. 
next Sunday afternoon, we, I invite you to the house. We take the thing out, we put it in the DVD player, and we have a movie day. But before we play, push play, we invite mom, dad, aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, pastor, youth pastors, worship leaders, everybody to the house, and we watch a movie. How would you rate it? PG, PG-13, rated R, or even worse? That's only for a week. God sees you. God sees. God sees you from 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 the from from that first date to the end of the date, and that's it. That's what you're judged by. God's going to judge the world in righteousness, and if God finds you guilty of breaking His law, you'll be guilty. And God's just punished because God is good. God is so good that He will punish liars. He will punish thieves. He will punish rapists, adulterers. He will appeal. He will punish those people. God is so good. It's kind, of, it's kind of like a Western movie, you know? You got a Western movie, you got, you got the outlaws banging up the town, all the townspeople are, are hiding, behind, hiding behind things, you know, and they're scared to death. But all of a sudden, you have like this Clint Eastwood guy come walking through, coming down the, with his horse and all. They run out because he's going to clean the town up. What do you think the attitude of the town is? Yes! They're so excited because justice is coming to this town, right? Well, justice is coming. And God, God will come and he will clean, clean things up. So when he does, the Bible says that all liars, thieves, adulterers, all these people will have their part in the lake of fire. But the good news, that's bad news. The good news is that while we're still yet sinners, Christ died for us. It's like being in a courtroom. You have, you have a fine, $50,000 fine. You can't pay the fine. You say, Judge, I'm really sorry, and I hear this a lot on the streets. I would just tell God I'm sorry. I'm for, he, just ask for forgiveness. <laughs> try that try it in a court of law. Try, or they'll say, well, because I asked Jesus in my heart. That's what, that's, that's what I've done. I'll go to heaven because Jesus is in my heart. What well, would you tell the judge that? Judge, I'm sorry I robbed the bank, but I asked you in my heart. It's not in the Bible either. Have you repented and trusted Jesus? Jesus is not in your heart. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. The Holy Spirit lives in you. Jesus is, Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. That's what the Bible says in, in, in Ephesians. So... So all of a sudden, you can't pay the fine. You judge, I can't pay it. You're hauled off to your handcuffs, hauled out of the courtroom. But then a stranger comes and says, wait a minute, judge. I sold my house, car, jet skis, horses, my land, everything that I own to raise the money to pay that person's fine. Here's a check for $50,000. Here you go. The judge says, tells, turns to you and says, wait a minute, Bailey. He tells, looks at you and says, you're free to go. The law's been paid. It's been satisfied. You're free to go home now. Why? Why, did, why would the judge let you go like that? Is it because you asked for forgiveness? Because the, pay, the fine was paid. That stranger sold everything, sacrificed it. That's what Jesus did. Jesus sacrificed everything to pay your fine, your sin debt in full. The last thing Jesus said on the cross was, it is finished. In the original, in the original language, it was titelestai. It's an accounting word, paid in full. He paid your debt in full. That's God's love. That's because God loves you. He paid your debt. Now, now at, at that time in the courtroom, you could have turned to the stranger and say, I don't want the money, I'm going to jail. No thanks. You can give him the big Heisman, you can do that, or you can say, thank you so much, follow your knees, say, what can I do for you? Thank you. What can I do to owe you what you've done for me? And all y'all ask is just come follow me. That's all Jesus is asking you, come follow me. I paid your fine, come follow me now. And now when you follow him, he makes you a fisher of men. If he hasn't done that, then you're following the wrong Jesus period. So please examine yourself, church, and, 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 and ask yourself, where am I at, Lord? Where, where am I at with you? Am I, am I, am I following you or, or am I just pretending? Because Jesus, Jesus wants true and faithful followers. And I believe there's a lot in this church. But I believe there, that there could be some they are just pretending. So, so please examine yourself. I really thank you for your gracious time. And Pastor will be back, but I love all of y'all. And uh, I want to see y'all. I want to see you fulfill God's purpose in your life before you're buried, also. Because I, I believe God, God wants to use you in a mighty way, each and every one of you. I don't care how old you are or how young you are. Okay, today's the day to start doing it. Okay, God bless y'all.